In this presentation, we will see how to fit to a polynomial in R. We're going to use some data from projectile motion, and we are going to ultimately compare our result to this fit that you see from Excel. Here we are inputting the data that we are going to plot and then fit. So in line two, we are assigning a set of numbers to the times variable. The times variable is a vector. We're using the little C or concatenate function in R. In line six, we are doing a similar operation, but we're establishing the heights. And then in line 10, we are combining the times vectors and the heights vectors into a data frame we're calling proj for projectile. So starting in line 13, we are plotting the data. We are taking an x comma y approach. And so the first argument is proj dollar sign times. The second argument is proj dollar sign heights. Our third argument is main, which is going to give the chart a title. The fourth argument is xlab, which is going to give it a an x-axis label. And the fifth argument, ylab, is going to give it a y-axis label. Projectile data should be fit to a quadratic, or also known as a polynomial of order two. So we've named our fit uh, proj underscore fit underscore one, and that is equal to LM. We are using R's linear model function. And then remember in linear model, we do Y tilde X, but now our X is going to be more complicated. But the Y is proj dollar sign heights. And then there's the tilde, I'm in line 19 in the code. And then the first part of the X is proj dollar sign times. And then I'm saying plus capital I, parentheses, proj dollar sign times caret two. So we're adding a sort of a second set of X's where it's the times squared. So we have, we have the Y, proj dollar sign heights, tilde, the X first set of X's, proj dollar sign times. And then there's a second set of X's, which are specified by this I parentheses. And then in the there, it's proj dollar sign times caret two. So that is the squared times. And that will give us the second order polynomial. And then in line 21, we are getting a summary of proj underscore fit underscore one. And then we see that summary in the console and we are comparing it to the fit we got in, over in Excel and we are seeing the same numbers. So the intercept we see that in the fit from Excel, the, the linear term, the slope, and the square term. We see all these that uh, we had in Excel are now over in R. In the theory, these parameters are given specific names. So the, the intercept is called Y0, or the initial position. The slope is called V0, or the initial velocity. And then the square term is the acceleration divided by two. So the parameter that we find is a divided by two. And if we want a, then we must multiply the parameter by two. So we can, in lines 24, 25, and 26, extract these values from our fit. So proj underscore fit underscore one is our fit. It has coefficients, so proj underscore fit underscore one dollar sign coefficients, and then we recall that that is a vector with named components, so one is called uh, parentheses intercept with a capital I, the, the what I often call the slope was uh, proj dollar sign times, and then the square term was I parentheses proj dollar sign times caret two close parenthesis. And then we remember that uh, if I want the acceleration, I have to multiply that by two. So that's also there in line 26. And then we are extracting the values. You can see in the summary that the Y intercept was 0 0.00932. The initial velocity was 2.47 and the acceleration was a minus 10.2883.
Next, we're going to display the equation on the plot. So in lines 32, 33, and 34, we are rounding our parameters to four decimal places so that the expression is not too long. In line 35 and 36, we are putting together our equation. So we are saying y equals, we want that to be exactly as is, so that's in quotes. And then next we want the initial position parameter, so that was y0. And then next we want an explicit uh, plus, so that's in quotes, space, I put spaces around both sides. And then we want the initial velocity parameter, and that multiplies a t, and then there's another plus, then I want another number. I'm taking my a and back back to the regular parameter, dividing it by two. And then finally, an explicit t caret two to show that that, it's, that multiplies t squared. And close off the parentheses. That creates the equation. And then I use the text function to display it. Uh, the first and second parameters in the text function are an x and a y. And so at a time at an x of about 0.25 is where you'll find the middle of the displayed equation. At a, at a vertical position of about 0.1, that is where uh, it is displayed vertically. And then the third argument is the actual equation we want displayed. Next, we want to display our fit curve right on the chart, and so we're going to use the curve method to do that. Remember, the first argument of the curve method is the function we want to plot, and its variable should be x, and so that is y0 plus v0 times x. Remember to make multiplications explicit, so y0 plus v0 star x plus a star x caret 2 to get that x squared, and divide that by 2. The next parameter is our from, we're going to go from uh, x, which is really a time, but x at 0 and go up to an x of 0.42. We are going to, our fourth argument is add equals true. We're going to add it to the plot we already have, and our fifth argument is call equals blue. We're going to have a blue color for the curve. R has another way to fit to a polynomial that I'm showing here in line 19. So I'm using proj underscore fit underscore two equals LM, the linear model function in R, open parenthesis, and then it's Y's tilde X's. So the Y's were proj dollar sign heights and then the tilde. And instead of just having a simple X proj dollar sign times, we use this poly method, P-O-L-Y, open parenthesis, and then our variable proj dollar sign times, comma a two to say that we want a polynomial of order two, that's a quadratic. And then our third argument is raw equals true, which I will ultimately discuss. And then end the poly method and end the linear model method. And then in line 20, I'm getting a summary of that. And you can see down in the summary that it's producing the same parameters we saw in Excel and from the previous way of doing the polynomial fit. The third argument of the poly method was raw equals true. Without saying raw equals true in the poly method, R will not use a simple linear and quadratic powers of the variable but it will try to introduce orthogonal combinations of those variables. If you don't know what orthogonal means, think of two vectors and are at right angles and are some, somewhat independent of each other. So this makes for better statistics to have independent variables, but it makes it harder to uh, read the results and compare the results, say, to what was in Excel or the other linear model. So we're gonna stick with the, the raw equals true approach. We can extract our coefficients 
from the fit the same way we did before. That's shown here in lines 23, 24, and 25. Now, with the poly method, the names of those components of the coefficients vector are more cumbersome. But you're going to copy and paste them, so it doesn't really matter if they're cumbersome. You're just going to copy and paste. Copy and paste is copy and paste. So uh, it's pretty much the same method as before, and we can extract these parameters and we get the same values as before.